Hey, Real Tough Candy, appreciate you having me on. Uh, I know we don't have a lot of time. I'd like to go over a little bit about um, what code means to me and how, how it's uh, helping me change my life for the better uh, and how it can anybody else's. I believe anybody can learn to code. Uh, neuroplasticity sounds like a big word. It's a real thing. It just means that you can grow your mind. You can expand it. You can learn. You can change. If you want to use college, that's fine, but you don't have to have college to do it. If you want to use a boot camp, that's fine, but you don't have to have a boot camp to do it. Um, I went to self-taught right for about 10 months, and then and the, by the time it's all said and done, it'll be about 10 months of boot camp before I feel like I'm probably job ready, you know. Um, but I'd like to take you back for a, a, a minute or two, uh, back to why I think it's important that I make a video and I send it in. What do I have that's different from everybody else? What value do I have to provide for you? I ha I am proof. I am living, walking, breathing proof that if I can do it, if I can at least get started doing it, then anybody else can get started. If I can change, you can change. You're one mindset away from getting help. You're one mindset away from changing your entire life. I had an epiphany one day. I decided I wanted better and I want more out of life. Working 50, 60 hours a week, third shift, plants 100 degrees inside, you know, just everybody hates everybody. Terrible environment. I decided I wanted more. And that's when I decided I was going to start teaching myself code, and I did right then, right then and there. Um, and been working at it ever since for about 10 months now. But for this story to have any real validation, let me take you back right quick to my childhood. I was raised in an absolute hellhole, a very violent environment. I remember my father choking my mother, threatening to blow his own brains out, pulling guns on himself, punching holes through the walls, shooting a satellite dish on top of the house back when you, everybody had satellite TV, you know, because the house wasn't cleaning it up, shooting her computer up. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. My mom left us, you know, in, in that environment. She took off and left me and my brother and my sister. Uh, and then my dad met a schizophrenic, paranoid woman with two children who were into methamphetamine and drugs and cocaine. And a girl was 16 and pregnant and, and, and getting coked out and pilled out and all that good stuff, you know, when, when we met them. So I, that trickled right into my life, you know. I ended up, uh, by choice, tried drugs at 12. And things just spiraled downhill, uh, deep, deep downhill, way downhill from... From there, and I ended up becoming a full-blown addict, breaking into houses, drive-by shootings, parking lot shootings. I'm not proud of any of these things. It just it is what it is. I'm in jail four times before the age of uh, 19. It's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm not proud of any of the things that I've done. But I say all this to say, I say all that to say this. If I can do it, what's your excuse? What are you waiting on? Not motivated. Not motivated, you said. <laughs> Who needs motivation? You gotta decide that you want better. You gotta decide that you want more out of life. And when you get that figured out, then you give it a shot. And I promise you, you won't need no near as much motivation as you think that you do. If you want a better life, it's yours for the taking. Only, hey, nobody's coming to your rescue. It was a good day in my life when I realized that nothing's changing unless Ty changes it. Nothing's gonna happen till I make it happen. If I want more out of life, I'm gonna have to put in more effort. If I wanna learn to code, if I'm going to teach myself JavaScript and the front end, whatever, if I'm going to learn these concepts and these things, it can be hard, man. Let's just be real. Learning to code is not necessarily easy. People call it easy. I say you're a liar. It can be hard work if you're going to be proficient. You're going to have to put in the time and the work and the effort, man. You should be putting in four, five days. I put in six and seven hours a day. Not sure sometimes you can't, but it just depends on what, how far are you willing to go to see success. What are you willing to do to get there? And when you, when you, what you need to do, if you're struggling with that, if you're struggling with putting in the time, and the effort, and the energy, you just need to decide that you want better, and you're willing to do anything to get there. And realize that if you don't get it done, nobody's coming to to code for you. Nobody's going to throw a job in your lap. That's a, those are outlying cases. That rarely happens. If you want this, it can be yours. People say the industry's too saturated. I look at dev jobs all the time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people applying. Sure. Just get good and then get better and then get better than that. And you'll get recognized, man. Look, look, talent and hard work doesn't go unrecognized. We live in a society. We're very blessed to live in a society where hard work is recognized and you can earn your way into a dev job and you can teach yourself and you can you can learn and you can rise above the situation. You just got to decide that you want to. That's what I decided. I decided I was tired of living in poverty. I decided I, I want more out of life. I'm tired of looking my wife in the face and seeing that look of disappointment when I tell her, 
Honey, I'm sorry, we can't buy this food. We can't pay this bill. My tooth is broken off right here in the back of my jaw. It's broke off into my gum. I make just enough money to not, to not be able to get any assistance for it, but not enough to pay for any dental work. And it hurts me every single day. But you know what? I'll be honest. It sounds crazy. I'm kind of grateful for it. I'm not complaining. Let's be clear. I'm, I'm kind of grateful for it because it reminds me what I'm working for. I'm working for the opportunity, a shot at a better life. I'm working for an opportunity to get out of this mess and out of this hole. Now, you may be sitting there and you're making excuse after excuse after excuse. Listen, man, you're talking to somebody who was a straight thug and addict and been seen and done at all. Look, I got a three-year-old in a wheelchair who almost died twice. She's had two, at least two brain surgeries, two major back surgeries, bladder surgeries. Man, I love that little girl more than I love myself, more than I love life itself. You know what it's like seeing her go through that, but you know what it does? It just motivates me, man. You don't a wife that struggled with deep depression. Look, man, if anybody's got excuses, it's yours truly. Stop making excuses and get to work. Appreciate you listening to me. Hope my story motivated you, helped you. Uh, I'll be making probably my own YouTube channel soon. I don't know. I just want people to get help. I want people to realize that there's more to life than waking up and playing video games every day. There's more to life than complaining and whining and crying. Man, get up and be about it, about it. Do something to change your life and to change yourself. Man, you, y'all gonna have to get hungry. I don't know. I better get off or out, get riled up. But appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, hit that bell, get the notifications, get all that Real Tough Candy's got to offer. All right. RTC for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Rachel Nicole and I'm a full stack QA engineer. So for today's segment, I will be disclosing to you guys how I went about my QA process. So first and foremost, am I self-taught? Did I go to university? Well, it seems to me that there's actually quite a few self-taught programmers here on the platform, which is really cool and all, but me, I went to Penn State University and I graduated this year in the major IST and I received a Bachelor of Science. Now before I tell you what IST stands for, back in 2015 I originally went to college for computer engineering because one day I wanted to be an application or a web developer. However, that didn't really work out for me. So if you're interested to see what it was like for someone to transition into a different major and still graduate on time, please feel free to visit my channel because I go a little bit more depth into that. But at the end of my freshman year, that's when I transitioned into the major IST, which stands for Information Services and Technology. So if you're sitting there wondering, how does IST even compare to the engineering major? Let me be blunt, because it's literally the easier path to take so that you can still get that engineering title after graduation. I honestly didn't even know IST was a major. But let me tell you, that was the best decision that I have made during my college experience because now I no longer had to worry about taking Calc 3 or the most difficult physics courses Penn State had to offer. This major is really dedicated to help you become a full stack developer and like I said, I would really recommend this major over engineering because the coursework is a lot easier and at the end of the day, you still have that engineering title attached to your name. So what did I even learn in IST? So this major really is dedicated to the programming aspect of development and this is something that I just really wanted to learn. So I learned a series of front-end and back-end languages ranging from Python, Java, C Sharp, C++, SQL, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, ABC, and XYZ. In addition to my coursework, Penn State also requires their IST students to take up an internship before graduation. And honestly, 
I think this is the best thing that Penn State enforces. And me, I've had an internship every single year since sophomore year because I wanted to gain as much hands-on experience as I can before stepping foot in the industry. Now, the internships was actually my recipe for success because that gave me the opportunity to work in various tech world, various tech roles ranging from web development all the way to QA engineering. And if you're wondering what it's like to work in a particular tech role, my best advice is to take the internship first. This is probably one of the most overlooked things in the job process, but in reality, you need to take advantage of this opportunity. You gotta bite the bullet because I too worked at unpaid internships, but you kinda gotta sift your mindset and start to realize that the information and the experience that you're gaining at the moment is priceless. And even if you don't feel me 100% on that statement, trust me, the employers will. The employers want to see that you are dedicated to learn new technologies. And on top of that, they just want to see you make that effort and you don't always have to be compensated for it. They want to know that you're just here willing to learn. So now that we got my background out the way, Let's address how my QA role came into play, because I had my first QA internship in my sophomore year of college, and I actually took that internship with my advisor. Now see, I think one big misunderstanding about internships is that most people think, oh, if I do an internship, it's got to be at some big name company. And in reality, that's not the right mindset. For your first internship, you really need to just find somebody who is willing to teach you and on top of that you need to reciprocate that you want to learn and once you got some you know some minor maybe intermediate knowledge under your belt that is the way you make that move to start applying to paid internships or those big named companies so during my first QA internship I only learned the basics of testing like what tests do you use why are they important when do you use them? Honestly, I didn't even get my second QA internship until almost two years later. In my senior year, the semester I was about to graduate college. Now, like I said earlier, I do go a bit more detail about this topic on my channel, but for this second QA role, I actually had to compete with somebody for the position. What we had to do is write up a test case document for evaluation. And fortunately though, I was able to land the job because they were impressed with my test case document. So that was my second QA internship. And about two months after graduation, that is when I landed the role that I have today for my full-time QA engineer position. So if you're still with me after all of this, I would just want to give you guys a quick tip of advice if you feel like you're wanting to give up on your QA engineer journey. Because if you're wondering why these QA employers aren't getting back to you, let's reflect. Have you taken an internship? Have you made yourself familiar with the programming languages I stated earlier? And most importantly, how often are you applying to these companies? Because, like I said, it took me almost two years to land my second QA internship role. And if you're wondering what my process was to land the full-time job that I have today, probably three to four months before I even got the position, I was sending out at least, at least five resumes a day to different companies for like I said, a couple months before I even got the job. So don't think you're gonna land your QA role overnight. This is, you gotta understand, like, life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We might work in sprints in the industry, but you gotta understand your journey in life, your journey in this QA role, or even just whatever development role you wanna take in life, you gotta understand, it is a marathon not a sprint. Shout out to RTC for inviting me for this developer's open mic today and I hope this story inspires you guys on your QA journey.